triumph we have in Christ. What victory we have in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, why don't we all stand together, maybe go find somebody to shake hands with. I know we've all been fellowshipping, it looks like. And uh, 
Amen. For those that's tuning in to Facebook, sorry we're getting started just a little minute or so behind set schedule, so to speak. We're having a good old time, fellowshipping, and that's what it's all about, coming to the house of the Lord and being able to see your brothers and sisters maybe you hadn't seen since Sunday. And it's good. I'll tell you, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. I hate to miss Sunday night. Amen. But I just, uh, I'm glad to be able to be back tonight. And I'm expecting God to do great things. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now and let's worship Him together. on a Wednesday night. Come on, let's magnify the Lord. Make a joyful noise. Let's fill the sanctuary with some praise right now. Can we just lift our voices? God, we love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come into your house. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise is comely. Praise is good. Praise is right. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. Somebody say amen. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. And I just want to pray, continue praying for revival. Everybody say revival. Amen. God has been doing some great things in our services, and we are so, so excited, amen, that God is moving. And we want to tap into what he is doing in this, somebody say, this time. Amen. We are seeing that, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. Continue praying for Brother Jerry Kelton and Brother Jerry Wallace. Uh, Brother Tyron Allen was having a rough day today. We want to continue praying for him as he's uh, still recovering. And amen, I know that God's going to touch him. 
I believe uh, Jack Crowley had uh, a little procedure yesterday, get some tubes in his ears, and I believe Braylon has his uh, procedure in the morning, and they're getting tubes in his ear, and so we want to lift them up in prayer that God will just touch them, and touch mom and daddy as well, and church said amen, amen. Uh, continue praying for Sister L.A. and her family, and uh, so, so many needs, uh, but God is so, so big and so mighty. Uh, I was talking to somebody before church, and there's nothing that my God cannot do. Amen. He is so good. Pam, it's good to see you tonight. Amen. We love you. Continue praying for you and your family. Amen. It's such an honor to have you here this evening. Um, but we want to pray for our event coming up this weekend on Sunday. And uh, we're going to be a part of the Prentice County Youth Revive. And I want to challenge you if you want to, before... Saturday or Sunday, if you could take a day and fast and pray specifically for that event, uh, that God would touch lives and change lives. Uh, I believe we're going to see a great harvest in our community uh, whenever God's people come together for the purpose of souls. Amen? Uh, whenever we make it about His business, He has a way of, of impacting lives. And so we want to pray that God would just do that this weekend. We've got our church growth seminar uh, coming up Saturday. We want to pray that God would just touch all those pastors and leaders and church people that are going to be coming to that event Saturday. Uh, I just believe we're going to see a great harvest from that. Amen. If you can, I know it's not announcement time right now, but I want to challenge you. Saturday, it starts at 830 at Cedar Grove. I want to challenge you. Be at that if at all possible. It, it will make an impact in your life and in your desire to work for the kingdom. Amen. Any other needs here tonight you'd like to make known? Amen. Praise God. Well, let's get any unspoken requests. Would you make those known right now? Amen. Could you just go ahead and lift both hands and just let's thank him right now. Let's just ask the Lord to touch these needs. God, we love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to get back together tonight, Lord, to worship you. God, I pray, Lord, that our hearts and our minds, Lord, would be in tune with what your spirit wants to speak to us. God, I pray, Lord, for these that's unable to be at church tonight because of sickness. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just let your healing, God, be with them. Touch Braylon, Lord. Touch Jack tonight. God, I pray, Lord, you would touch their little bodies. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just help them, Lord, to know that you are good and that you are great. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch Brother Tyron right now. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch his body God give him healing make him whole in his body right now in the name of Jesus God I pray Lord for these that's lost loved ones God that you would just let your peace touch them God I pray Lord that you would let them see your strength oh God let your see your strength made perfect in their weakness God that's whenever you really show Lord who you are whenever we've gotten to the bottom Lord of what we can do Lord that's when we can really tap into your ability God Help us, Lord, to understand that you are greater. There's nothing too great for you. God, I pray, Lord, your anointing over the rest of this service, God. Touch Brother Lee in a moment, Lord, when he shares the word. And we'll be gracious, Lord, to thank you in Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen, amen. Let's continue to worship him right now. Amen. How many of you want the presence of the Lord to surround you in this place? Thank you, Jesus. Surround us in this place, oh God.
about the presence of the Lord. Amen. The Bible talks about in His presence there's fullness of joy. Amen. And I'm, I'm thankful for the presence of the Lord. Amen. That is something that we know that wherever we go, we serve an omnipresent God, and that He is everywhere. Amen. And so whatever you need, uh, I remember the first parking lot service that we had, I preached a message called A Safe Place. And then I talked to us about how, you know, I know we, we like to say it's in the Bible, but I, I learned that it's not in the Bible, that he's as close as the mention of his name. Uh, but that is a true statement because he is there all the time. Uh, and he, is, he, is a, he pays attention to his name. When you call on his name, you call the power of God into your situation. I'm thankful for that. Amen. But, uh, but he, it is a safe place that we can run to. His name is, and be safe, and I'm thankful. One more time, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the name of Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Ushers, if you would, come prepare to wait upon us for our midweek giving. And I am so, so excited tonight uh, to have uh, Brother Jim Lee teaching. And if he wants to go ahead and be making his way up, amen, I'm excited to hear from him this evening. Amen. And I know he's got a word for us. I do want to just quickly remind us, ladies, prayer in the morning at 8 o'clock for any of our ladies that can come. And then Bible quiz practice tomorrow evening at 630. And I know they'll have a great time. God, I love you so much. Thank you for your presence that's in this place. God, I pray, Lord, you would just bless this offering right now. Bless those that's able to give. Lord, those that have a desire, God, I pray, Lord, that you would bless them, God, that they would be able to be faithful also. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Amen. As you're giving, also just want to quickly say Christmas program uh, practice is uh, tomorrow. There's been some messages sent out. And so if you got that message from my wife, uh, that's Friday. What did I say tomorrow? It's Friday evening. I got Friday evening right here, and I said tomorrow. And uh, she says Friday is tomorrow all day. And now I've got it in my head that tomorrow's Friday. And, uh, but it is Friday evening. And uh, so if you have any questions about that, you can get with my wife. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a church growth seminar training at Cedar Grove beginning at 8.30 Saturday morning. You don't want to miss that. There's a lot, a lot of speakers, including Brother Scott Sistrunk, Brother Daryl Weber, and uh, just a lot of great information is going to be shared. It's going to challenge you, and, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we will have Sunday morning service only at 10 a.m., and in that service, we're going to have Brother Scott Sistrunk, who is our national North American Missions Director, and uh, I found out today that he was still going to be in town this weekend, and uh, so he's going to be with us Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. You don't want to miss that service. Uh, he is going to bless us with the word, and then that afternoon, uh, we're going to go out to the Prentice County Revive event. It starts at 3 o'clock for all those who can after lunch. Uh, if we can get over there by 1.30 or so, 1, 1.30 uh, at the latest and help set up. Uh, that will be a huge blessing. And uh, Sunday morning, if you want to come a little more casual, I'm probably not going to have a suit on Sunday. I will have a sport coat at least on, but I'm going to be a little more casual Sunday. Uh, so after lunch, I can ease right over there and help them get some things set up that we need to get set up. And that will be a big help to them. Amen. Are you ready for the word tonight? Amen. I appreciate Brother Lee. And I haven't got to hear him teach since we were having young adult class way before COVID. And, uh, and I, I told, I told y'all last time, I said, we've got some people that are in here that I love to hear teach. And, and I'm thankful that we're going to hear from more of them. Amen. But I appreciate Brother Lee. I appreciate his service. Uh, one of our board members serves our board well, serves our church well. He serves you well. Amen. Well, can we all stand right now and let's welcome Brother Lee as he comes to share with us what the Lord's laid on his heart. You may be seated. Let me uh, make sure I have a good connection with my large print iPad here. Some of you younger ones don't know the meaning of large print yet, but I'm giving you a... Uh, Brother Jordan stopped me when I was on my way in and asked me I had scripture or a title that uh, he needed to put up, and I said, no, Brother, I'm winging it. I'm like a one-winged chicken. I'm just going to be flying in circles tonight, so... Some people have the gift of speech. Some people enjoy this, getting in front of a crowd, and are gifted at it. I'm the one that is not gifted at it. I'm the one that doesn't really enjoy it. But I've always felt that when you 
asked to do something in the church, when you're asked to try to provide that service, uh, through my ten years church, I've done everything from children's church to Sunday school to uh, everything that was asked. And uh, uh, I actually started out mowing the yard at church. So uh, maybe one day I can retire and end mowing the yard at church. But uh, I want to take you back a little bit in in, in my life. And uh, I I really, I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to teach. I'm just going to speak tonight. And uh, my mind went back. uh, Actually, the the last lesson that Brother Sutton was preaching on a Wednesday night or teaching on a Wednesday night, uh, my mind went back to late 1979, 1980. Brother E.C. Knott, pastor of Northwest Oklahoma City Pentecostal Church, on a similar Wednesday night to this, looked out over the congregation and said, intercessory prayer is quickly becoming a lost art. Now, I want you to understand what this man and me, the relationship we had. He was my first pastor, but this man was 70 years old, around that at that time. He had been in World War II, and he had lost a leg in World War II. He had a wooden leg, a prosthetic leg, and a prosthetic leg back then are not like the ones they have today. They were a big wood, leather, metal frame, clunky thing. And he would take and hike that up into the church. The church was raised up uh, off of the the ground level. He would come up eight or ten flights of stairs into the sanctuary. He would come to the podium, and on the ch- on the podium he had a chair that was his. And that chair had high arms on it because when he stood up and sat down, he would use those arms to support himself. But it wasn't sitting in the chair that touched this 15-year-old. It was his prayer before it because he would take that leg that wooden leg, and he would hike it up. And that one good knee that he had, he would bow that one good knee. And when he started to pray to this 15-year-old boy, it was like heaven opened up. And you could feel the Spirit. You could feel it. And that drew me. That compelled me to want that. And I remember it's late 1979 or 1980 when he said that because... July the 4th of 79 I remember the spirit was dealing with me and most of you I think know but at that time I was staying with foster parents in Oklahoma City and it's amazing in the first place because we went to a Methodist foster home that put me with Pentecostal foster care it was God moving in my life from that early age, because I have I have aunts and uncles here. I had a, a grandfather that pastored in a Pentecostal way. I had been raised around the church, but not in the church. But he was dealing with me that, that weekend, and I was so afraid that the rapture was going to take place, I would not look up and watch the fireworks. It, it, it troubled my soul. And, and I wish that I could say that day to this, I still had that anxiety, that expectation of him coming back. Somehow that's faded through the years. I don't understand that you can have it so strong and then we get busy with life and we lose that. But I want that again. Uh, So that was a very unique time in my life. Uh, I actually received the Holy Ghost four days later, July the 8th, 1979. So that anxiety stirred something in me to want that. But I was always drawn back to that prayer. And that statement that he made just a a few months later about intercessory prayer. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I want to take off of uh, Brother Soden where he left off in Ezra the last Wednesday night he preached. And I want to speak a little bit out of Nehemiah. And most of you know that have studied the Bible, Ezra and and Nehemiah, parallel the same time frame. Uh, Ezra 
was the high priest of the time, and Nehemiah was the secular leader of the people of Israel. Now, the people of Israel were under subjection to the Persian king. They had been overtaken. They had lost their way. They were in sin. They were not obedient to God, and God let them be taken over. And I want to go there a little bit today. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 1, and, and don't stand, please, because I'm going to be giving a little bit. Uh, chapter 1, starting in 1. The word of Nehemiah, the son of Hakali, and it came to pass in the month of Cheslu, the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace. Now, Nehemiah was in a subservient position to the king, but he was enjoying the pleasures of the palace. And I, I want to compare, and we know Bible is... Old Testament is types and shadows of our New Testament walk with God. And I want to compare a little bit of that today. That Hanai, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked him concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Now, I want to take note here, brother. So something stepped out to me, and, and I want to try to bring it out. I have it in my mind, bring it to my mouth for a different story. But notice here that it wasn't the priest that started the burden. It wasn't the secular leadership, but it was the people that started the burden. And that's the same way with us today. Sometimes it might not be the pastor in the ministry that starts the burden for, for the church, for, for those that are lost. It, sometimes it's the people that start it. And uh, th that's what happened here, that the people came him and they said unto me the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the providence those that have once been God's chosen that have once known the blessings of God that have once been God's favor are in great affliction and reproach the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates there are burned with fire and that's the same with those that have once been in the church you know, we say the latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. And I think part of that rain, part of the end-time revival, is going to be a restitution of those that were once raised in the church. And, and, and the burden for that, it falls on us to have that today. And I think that this is a type and shadow of that, that the, the brethren came to him and they had a burden for those that were under reproach, under distress, because of where they found themselves now. And that's our job today, church, is to find that same burden. Sometimes it's, it's hard for us to understand or, or realize that this church, this salvation, is not first person singular. It's not I, me, my, mine. It, it's second person plural. It's us. It's we. It's them. You know, it, it should not just all be about us. When we pray, it should not all be about us. And, and sometimes that, that's hard because we see our burden as great sometimes. We see our needs as great. But uh, God can make it where we see others and get blessed by that. Nehemiah 1 and 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Nehemiah, this is the start of Nehemiah's intercessory prayer for those that are lost, those that are under oppression of the people of Israel. Uh, verse 9, Nehemiah quotes God, reminding him of his promise to the people will away return to grace. But if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them though they were of you, cast out unto you the uttermost part of heaven, yet I will gather them from thence and I will bring them unto a place that I have chosen to set my name there. Uh, oftentimes when we're praying, the scripture is the best thing to use. We, we have uh, scripture and it affects, it's the same from the start to the end. It affects people like it has us. If you ever stop to think of generation to generation to generation, uh, 
I, I've lost, I used to know the statistics of how many billion people are in the world today. But you take that back to the beginning of Adam and Eve and multiply it after generation after generation after generation, the number is phenomenal. I mean, you, you just can't, the, the human mind can't, can't fathom it. But all were chosen by God to, to serve him and to be accepted with his salvation. And I've often wondered, as I grow later in life, how God handles the pain. We go through our life. And, and we experience things that cause us individual pain, the loss of a loved one, things that happen through life and stuff like that. But if you stop to consider that from God's point of view, all, all the people through all the generations, all the love that he has given, there is so many loss, so many loss, and his pain must be only God could bear it. We couldn't, we couldn't even imagine it, much less bear it. Nehemiah chapter 2, and it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of Artaxerxes, the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now, I had not before time been sad in his presence. How many of us can say that today? That we never went to God sad. Now, think about it. Nehemiah is in servitude to a foreign king. Even though he's in a place of respect and honor, he's still subjected to the king. The cupbearer's service was to taste the wine or whatever was presented to the king in case it was poisoned. And if it was poisoned, he would be the first to die. So this is where Nehemiah was. You know, he, he, it was honored, but yeah, but he could die at any day. From anybody was trying to poison the king. But even in his own place of servitude, in in subjectivity, he had never been sad before the king. How many of us have never been sad with our own problems, never been sad with our own issues that we're going through in life when we go to prayer before God? The only thing that Nehemiah was sad about was that the people that were left for the captivity were in great reproach. They were in distress. So so is, is that an example to us? Sh should we go before God with our needs, but not in a sad way, because we know that he'll meet our needs, is the only reason that we should be sad, the only reason that we should have that intercession before God is for somebody else and not for ourselves? Just, just a thought. Uh, Nehemiah learned what God had been trying to tell man from the beginning. When man, when God... When man asked God the first question, does anybody know what the first question man asked God was today? Not God asked man, but man asked God. Cain was the first one in the Bible to ask God a question. He asked, am I my brother's keeper? And God spent the next 66 books of the Bible, thousands of years, prophets, apostles, disciples coming back with a resounding yes, 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 that we are our brother's keeper. Uh, everything from, from the start to finish of the Bible, everything from start to finish of Jesus' life tells us that, that we are responsible for one another. We are our, our brother's keeper. Uh, Galatians 6, 1 and 2 gives us an example of that. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which see it, gossip to your brothers and sisters about it. Tell the pastor about it. The only one which is talking about is about God. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And it's funny, but I had this this scripture come to me in, in an example today at work. Uh, I've been having a little trouble out of 
one of the other individuals at work. And uh, one of those, and, and I'm sure many of you have seen them, that are quick to point out your fault, you're wrong, something happened wrong in your department, that kind of thing. And when there's a mountain of things in their own, and one of those things of his own came to me today, and one of the ladies that worked in my department uh, was in my office, and we were talking about it, and I said, I'm, and she's been here, she's visited with us, by the way, and uh, I said to her, I said, I'm fighting my flesh against my spirit today. My flesh wants to go out there and point it out to him and, and to the management that, hey, you know, this is, what, this is what he's doing, this is what's wrong. Uh, because he's quick to do that about me, but my spirit was fighting and saying that God fights the battle. Uh, you, you know, every day we, we face things like this, and, and seeing them and applying them to our life is, is one thing. Uh, reading about them and, uh, and doing them is a totally different thing. And uh, I want to take this time to commend the, the young ministers and, and the other ministers that, that stand up here and do this on a regular basis. Uh, sometimes we, we, we take and look at them and uh, you can see an expectation from them that uh, they're expecting when their words to go forth that there should be a reaction. But I want to encourage y'all that often there's not a reaction that day. Uh, many times I can go back over things that y'all say and they, they stir me to further reach out and, and think something uh, one of you were speaking the other day about uh, Judas, and I just happened to be reading, uh, I can't remember if you were speaking about the, the Judas that uh, helped the apostles out, and I, and I was thinking of the Judas that uh, betrayed Jesus in, in the two houses of Judas, you know, and, and that thought came to my mind as a reaction to, to y'all speaking, that... Uh, we can have the, the same name, but we can take it two different directions. But I want to thank y'all for that, that uh, y'all do matter, and, and y'all do make a difference. And even if sometimes you don't see immediate results, it doesn't mean that there is not an effect. James 5, 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one converteth him, let him know that he which converteth a sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Once again, it's a blessing to us to help somebody else. Uh, we can't live this just word about ourselves. The, the greatest blessings I get in a service today, when I feel the Spirit starting to move on me, is not because of me. It's when I see somebody else getting blessed. And when I see somebody, and I think back uh, oftentimes uh, to different ones, I, I just uh, asked my eldest son this week, uh, have you seen so-and-so lately that used to go to church here? And I know he's still in this area. And he said, yeah, I actually I saw him a couple couple months ago. And, and but my, my mind and my heart went back to that individual, and there's so many of them like that. And uh, But I get a blessing from seeing y'all get blessed. Uh, we each have our place in the church. And we don't realize it at times, but each of us fit a role. Some lead worship in the service, uh, and I'm not talking about up here on the platform. I'm, I'm talking about lead by worshiping in, in the sanctuary. And, and we all take our place, and we get blessed from one another. Uh, often we focus our prayer on ourselves, but I want you to remember Job. Uh, I was reading through the book of Job one time, and of course, like everybody that's been in the church any amount of time, I knew the end result. But I don't know that I ever stopped and looked at the timeline of Job. So I started reading and kept reading and kept reading and kept reading. And something in my spirit got anxious. Job, come on, I want Job to be delivered. I want Job to be delivered. I know he does, but I'm, I'm ready for it, you know. And you just keep reading it and reading and reading it. And then it ends sort of abruptly. If you've ever read the book of Job, and God delivered Job, and he prayed for his friends. Not when he prayed for himself, not when he prayed for his own condition. And then it ends. And, and, and that's the way ours can end sometimes. Uh, you may be going through something in life. I challenge you to, instead of praying for your condition, instead of praying for your situation, 
take a burden for somebody else and, and pray for that burden. Pray for that individual. And you may find that God honors that and answers your need without you ever even asking for it because you're honoring somebody else's need. Bear ye one another burdens and so fulfill the law. Uh, Nehemiah 5 and 5, this stood out to me because I have been since 1979 in and around the church. Uh, like I said, I wasn't raised in it, but I was raised around it. I have been full of the Holy Ghost or have was filled with the Holy Ghost, not always full, thankfully so, since 1979. And I have seen many raised up. I, I can look out now in, in the congregation and many of your children uh, that my children were raised with. And I taught many of your children, some of your grandchildren I taught, and you taught my children and now teaching my grandchildren. There's nowhere, anywhere else in the world that you're going to find that there's anything like the family of the church of God. Nehemiah, in a, in a, a short brief statement, chapter 5 and 5, yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren and our children as their children. And that's no more true there than it is today in the church that, that we have today. That we are like flesh and brethren. We, we interact together. We come together. We worship. We come together and pray for each other. We socialize together. We teach, like I said, teach each other's children. And, and I have a vested interest in your salvation. And you have a vested interest in my salvation and my children and your grandchildren. And it's the same way with me and yours. And, and that's the way God intended it. That, that we shouldn't think about it as I'm in my mind. I was never a stellar English student, especially grammar. Uh, literature was a little easier because I like to read. But, uh, first person singular, second person plural. If you had asked me when I was going to school, I would know what that meant. I don't know much about it today. But I know it's not God's will for us to look at life that way. I've got a pretty simple trip to the house from here. I take a turn out of the driveway. I stop at one red light. I go through two stop signs, and I'm home. In that short trip, I can I know of more more than one person that used to call this their home trip. And most days, I take and, and drive that drive and drive by it, and I'm lost in my world, and i worried about the things of the day, thinking about what I have to do or what I have been doing. But every now and then, every now and then, God will tug at my heartstrings and say, remember this. And, and my eyes will tear up unless I'm a lump in my throat. And, and I, I remember when, and, and I'll say, God, don't forget them. Bring them back. Bring them back. Bring them back. And if I'm like that in my short drive, I know many of you are like that too. And, and many of you going to church here many more years than I have at this church. And some of you born and raised here uh, your whole life and, and know many more that have been through these doors. There's, there's been a phenomenal amount that are still in this city still in this town that we can still reach. Once full of the Holy Ghost, once knowing the blessings of God, and now they find themselves like the children uh, of Israel, the remnant that are left in the captivity. They're in great despair. They're in great despair. They're, they're miserable. I happen to meet uh, one uh, of these individuals and in passing in, in Walmart, of course, of all places, that's a great meeting place, I think, in Bowling, and stopped and said hello, and just the simple, we miss you, and that person teared up just, just with those simple words. So 
says, what would it be if we knocked on the door and said, please come? Please come. We're thankful that you're here, that you're in this. We want you to come back. What would it be? There's so many out there that we can reach. So many we can reach uh, through our prayers uh, to intercede, to be a burden. And, and many of you, I hope, know what true intercessory prayer is. It's, it's prayer and groaning in the Spirit. It's, it's crying. And, and it's, a, it's a physical sacrifice to intercede to in intercessory prayer. Uh, and, and we don't need to lose that. We don't need that burden. Uh, one of my, my favorite stories is uh, Brother Smith, Gary Smith, uh, in, in, in the great Sunday school room group that was in that there in a certain time, uh, him and a few other elderly gentlemen. And he talked about the, the ladies here in the church praying him back uh, when the war was fixing to start. And he was fixing to get out of the, the Navy. That uh, he, was, he was leaving that day. And one of his buddies that was a readyman come to him and said, hey, they're locking the base down. You better hurry up and get out. And, and he attested the fact that he got out and they didn't hold him to the ladies in the church praying him back home. And uh, that's what we need to do. These that are lost, we need to pray him back home. And I'm not talking about boom. I'm talking about praying them back home. Uh, do we really believe what we say we believe? Do we, do we believe that the signs of the times are here, that this is the end time? Uh, back in that time frame that I was first referring to in the late 70s, early 80s, we used to talk about it and surmise how it would take place. Now the average person understands the technology that it takes to, to, to do the things, the mark of the beast and, and uh, one world government and all that. Uh, it, it's for the simplest of us technology-wise, for me, <laughs> can understand that it's, it's happening. And, and we see the signs of the time every day. I, I firmly believe that even this uh, virus that we've been going through is part of the sign of the end time. And uh, do, we, do we believe it? Uh, that we're seeing end time prophecy fulfilled? Then our burdens would be great for those and I'm focusing tonight mainly on those that have once been in, but for the ones that have never been in. Down to my last page. In closing, Nehemiah 8, 5, and 6. Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, and he was above all the people. And when he opened the book, all the people stood. All the people stood. You ever wonder why we do what we do? Because it's in the Bible. And Ezra blessed the Lord with the great God, and the people answered, Amen, Amen. And with lifting up their hands and bowing their heads and worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. Can we do that today? Amen, amen. Come on, can we just take some time and pray for a little bit? Amen. If you want to kneel where you are, if you want to come around this front and make an altar. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for those that remnant. Amen. I believe that God is sending people back home in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's declare that right now. Come on, if you've got family members that you've been praying for and you've been seeking for, amen, this is a great time today to go ahead and call their name again in prayer. And just believe God. God, I know you're going to touch my child. I know you're going to touch my grandchild, my niece, my nephew, or my, my parents. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just touch our family right now. God, help us, Lord, to know that we're something, we're part of something that's much bigger, Lord, than just one church or one area, Lord. But this is 
part of your will, Lord, for this whole world, for whosoever will. God, that all would come to the knowledge of who you are, Lord, and the price that you paid, Lord, to have them delivered out of the sins that they're in. God, I pray, Lord, that we would have the spirit, Lord, of that father, Lord, of that prodigal son, Lord, as he come back home. Let us, Lord, be looking. Uh, let us, Lord, be looking with arms ready to wrap around those that come home. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray, Lord, for every wayward person right now. God, Lord, those that's been a part of this church in the past, Lord, those that maybe don't even know you, that don't even know the power of who you are, God, I pray, Lord, that you would just open eyes, open understanding, God. God, I pray, Lord, you would put a burden in them, God, that they would know, Lord, that they're not going to find what they're looking for in the things of this world and the drugs of this world, Lord, of the, the relationships of this world. But, Lord, they can find everything that they need in you. God, for you, Lord, created that void in us to be filled and that can't be filled and satisfied with anything else other than you. God, I pray, Lord, that we would see a return in God. In the name of Jesus, come on. I, I wonder, could we just lift our voices for a little bit? Amen. Come on, it's easy sometimes to pray and just to kind of get in a corner somewhere and not lift our voice. And, and I understand everybody's got your own prayer language, but there's something about it when you begin to lift your voice. All of heaven pays attention. Yes, all of hell is paying attention too. Amen, because they can hear your voice. God, I pray right now, Lord, that there would be a certain sound or heard coming from this building right now. A sound of faith, God. A sound, Lord, a belief that there is nothing impossible to you. God, a sound that we know that there is no sinner that's too sinful. God, there's no backslider that's fallen too far. God, that your hand can't reach down into the pit that they're in and lift them up, God, and restore, God, the things that the enemy has stolen. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to have the faith that we need right now to go into the, the life of those individuals, Lord, that we're willing to pull them out. God, there's some, Lord, that's with love and tenderness, but there's some with fear, God, that we've got to let them know, Lord, that this is the end time, God, that we've got just a certain amount of time to work. Help us to work while it's day, for the night's coming where no man can work. God, help us to be busy about the Father's business tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Come on, He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I don't know if you've ever been maybe in a big group of people and uh, maybe you wasn't around all of your family, but then all of a sudden you start getting close to a, an area. Maybe if you're at the flea market or if you're at a, a place you don't normally go to, and as you get close, you start saying, uh, I think I know where my family is because you can hear them. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I know who that is over there. That's uh. Y'all know, y'all know, anybody else? Uh, I, I've got some with some volume, some, some I don't want to say loud mouth, because that's not respectful, uh, but i got some loud mouths in my family, <laughs> and uh, but I, we can recognize, that, hey, that's that's my family, I'm, I, I know where I'm at now. Uh, that ought to be what happens when people come around the people of God, that spirit filled, I mean, there ought to be a certain sound coming, hey, I know where I'm at now, that's, that's my brother, that's my sister, I'm, I'm around something familiar now. Amen. That's what it ought to sound like in the presence of the Lord. There ought to be a certain sound coming. Amen. That's 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 my people. That's my people. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lee. Amen. For talking to us tonight. Amen. For what the Lord laid on your heart. Praise God. Amen. I believe we're going to see a returning of the remnant in Jesus' name. Amen. But it's going to come through prayer. Amen. Amen. Again, this week, if you would, if you'd take some time and, and pray and fast over this meeting coming up this weekend, and I know God's going to do great, great things. Don't forget, Sunday um, morning, we'll have Brother Scott Sistrunk with us. You don't want to miss that. Invite somebody to come with you, and uh, he's a, a great, great man of God and a great leader of North American Missions and uh, doing a phenomenal job there. Uh, but Saturday, the church growth seminar all who can if you can come 8 30 saturday morning it's not going to last it'll be over a little around lunch time after lunch uh, but a lot of great information is going to be shared to help you god bless you let's all stand and again thank you brother lee man thank you so much for sharing that with us and uh, I, I appreciate all of you being here on this wonderful wednesday i look forward to seeing you sunday in jesus name you can be dismissed